Good evening, Park Church. It's Wednesday, January the 12th, and this is your midweek pastor's moment. Thanks for taking a few moments to sit down and uh, take this moment together. Uh, we're always so appreciative when you take time out of your day, not just to hear about the announcements and happenings at the church, but also just to spend a few moments growing and learning together and sharing. And uh, that's what I want to do today. You know, it isn't just Christians that ask the question, does God still speak? Does God still speak? If there is a God out there, does he speak? Does, what does he say? How can I know that? Um, and so that's really the second part. If God is there and he speaks, how can I hear him? And if you've ever wondered that question yourself, I want to tell you the answer to the question of whether God speaks is yes. Yes, he does speak. And a key to hearing God speak is really knowing uh, who God is and what he says, what he's like and what he has already said. And we find that um, in scripture, in the canon of scripture as we have it. We know um, about God's person, about his, his values, about his commandments. So we know uh, what is pleasing to God, what's displeasing to God. And those are cr crucial when we are um, asking ourselves the question, what is God saying? Um, and so uh, key to hearing God's voice is not as some people think it is. If you want to hear God's voice, some people think that it's, uh, you need to be a scholar. Um, some people think that you need to be, you know, have a certain intellect or maybe that you need to be emotional. Uh, but hearing God's voice isn't contingent upon education, uh, intellect, or emotion. We're dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus said when he was leaving his disciples, he said, I must go so that another counselor will come, another counselor who will lead you in all truth. And the tr this truth that the Holy Spirit leads us in are the truths of what God is saying to us. John records in John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. And I, I proudly would identify with that as one of his sheep. He is the chief shepherd and, and I'm just one of his sheep. And so you may be thinking that, well, if God speaks, how come I've never heard him before? If God is speaking and, and I'm as his sheep supposed to hear his voice, why have I never heard it? And my hunch is that you actually have. You've heard him speak before. And uh, this is to... The, the person who's a believer in Christ. If, if you're not a believer in Christ, then you have no claim to be listening that what God is saying may seem um, outlandish um, or to Jesus' contemporaries, it may seem blasphemous uh, or extreme. Um, but I bet you have heard his voice before. And, and if you could remember maybe to that moment when you received Christ into your heart, what prompted you? What made the shift in that moment, in that instant, whether it was by your bedside, whether it was in a church service, what changed that motivated you or prompted you to make that commitment? Have you ever maybe heard a sermon and you felt like the pastor, the speaker was speaking directly to you in whatever circumstance you were facing right in that very moment? You felt as if they were reading your mail. Um, have you ever had a nudge or a prompting or an urgency inside of you to do something? Or have you ever read a passage of scripture that you, perhaps you had read before and then you had a thought that helped you understand the passage uh, and apply it to maybe where you are? If any of those are a yes or a yeah, I, I think so, then yes, God has spoke to you and you have already heard him. And you know what, this is really where we all start. We all start at this moment, each and every one of us, in what it means to hear God's voice, to listen to him. And uh, we really need the Bible as well because it's a filter. It's a filter by which we discern what is from God, what's just our own thoughts or what we would maybe call the flesh, and what is from the enemy. And so it's where we learn to listen patiently and confidently that God does want to speak to us if we're willing to listen. And so uh, this is really what the Hearing God seminar is 
about. The Hearing God Seminar is six weeks, and we start really in these just basic foundational principles of God speaking to us, and what does that mean? What can we expect Him to say, and how can we learn to hear Him? And so uh, at the Hearing God Seminar, you get a participant manual, and you also get a journal which is where we uh, will spend some time each week. There's, there's a little bit of, of practicum, or you might call it homework, just ways to practice or exercises for the week in learning to hear God's voice and, and developing that discernment. I have to say personally that my journey with hearing God has been uh, an overwhelming experience. Uh, can never have believed what God has done through uh, listening to his voice and all the things. I, I've said before on the midweek moment, I, I've brought stacks of my journals. And uh, they're an incredible, incredible testimony to look back and, and hear and see the things that God was speaking on, on these very dates. You know, this one is from April 30th. Um, I didn't put the year in. Now it seems more relevant to do that. Um, but they're just overwhelming. They're, they're open. They're, they're really honest uh, conversations. And it's amazing how God leads and, and you begin to hear him. And this is the beginning of hearing him throughout your day. Not just during your, your quiet devotional time when maybe the uh, environment is perfect for listening. But it's hearing him in a crowd and, and sensing that nudge and then being obedient. And that really also involves the uh, courage we get from the Holy Spirit. Um, prayer is more than just uh, the list of needs that we have. But when we sit and we learn to listen and we hear him, we can expect him to be encouraging. We can expect him to, to give us his peace and, and his hope and, and, and reassure us of his promises even as we, we sung on Sunday. He is our, he's our heavenly father and we want to we sit and we want to stay in his presence. Uh, Matthew 7 says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts? Or Luke says, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. So if we desire to hear Him and we make ourselves available to hear Him and uh, we're willing to wait on Him and listen, God does speak to us and it's so enriching and overwhelming. Uh, there's been times where I just sit there to have my journal and I get to the end of the page and I think, or the end of my time that I have, and I, and, and I just caution even walking away from that moment because I just sense God near. And it's not something exclusive because I'm a pastor. It's just what I've learned to develop that nobody told me about or taught me about growing up in a Christian home and in a Christian family and going to church regularly. I didn't know that I could have this intimate experience with God regularly and have Him speak to me personally. So I really want to encourage you just once again to get involved in the Hearing God Seminar. If that sounds at all like the enriching prayer life you want to have or you wish you had, come out. It's only six weeks beginning on February the 15th. I want to offer it online on February the beginning on the 16th because so many people are on our park online community or maybe they serve on Tuesday nights and aren't able to get out. And so I encourage you to sign up, go to our website, click on the community small groups tab or go on the church center app and sign up for the Hearing God Seminar. And then this is lived out. Out in our small groups, every one of our small groups, we believe you should be just listening and praying and discerning what God is saying. And then we do it at our prayer summits. The next prayer summit is on January the 23rd at 6 p.m. One hour we spend time in worship, but then we spend time praying together to be encouraging one another, lifting each other's burdens and listening together uh, for what God is saying that we might be mutually encouraged. So I just want to pass that on to you again. Here's a few announcements this coming Sunday. Uh, it's going to be a great Sunday. Jordan Dobush is with us in person. Jordan is our global worker in uh, Malawi, and he's going to be here in person bringing us a powerful testimony about what God is doing physically in his body, the healing. Many of you have been praying for Jordan for his emergency uh, flight that he had to take out of Malawi. And so he's going to be here sharing that with us. It's Communion Sunday. So if you're part of our Park Online community, make sure you have your emblems available to partake in the service. And for the first time ever, this is Selfie Sunday. Uh, we're going to be asking you to send us your selfies of your family. We, uh, we love to know you and know your name and know your family. And uh, it's great to put a face to those names. And uh, we have them in our pastoral directory um, as various pastoral care items. We like to see you and we need to update many of those. Family info forms will be passed out and then we're going to ask and give you some opportunities to send us your selfies. You're going to text them to 587-600-1905. Spoiler! Um, but that's happening on Sunday. You'll get some more information about that. 
Dave Ramsey is on many radio stations uh, throughout Canada and the U.S. and he gives practical, biblical, financial advice and he answers questions. He debunks some of the myths about money or about debt or about all kinds of things. And so uh, we haven't offered this seminar in a number of years, but there have been so many testimonies of reducing 20, 30, $40,000 in debt. Um, it can be done and uh, you'll learn the principles to set up a budget and a contingency fund to give like no other. And so uh, it begins on January the 20th. The cost for the course is really just to cover the materials. We're, we're so happy that Dan Murphy will come and facilitate this for us. So um, there's no shame or stigma to talking about debt or finances. And so I encourage you, if that's at all of interest, to uh, you can email Dan or you can come and look at the material, but sign up for the financial seminar. Uh, Breaking Free is a women's small group that is going to be running. Beth Moore's Breaking Free on Thursday mornings at the church. If evenings aren't your thing in the winter, the days are still pretty short. Uh, you can come out on Thursdays and uh, study that with some ladies. And on the topic of ladies, ladies, you have an event happening uh, next week, January the 19th, and it's going to go to uh, a great cause. It's proceeds towards the Strathcona Food Bank. We know that many are still struggling with um, food insecurities and so this is a great opportunity ladies uh, to have a little competition uh, for the best shopper to be but you'll be meeting here at the church uh, at 6 30 and uh, you can uh, just join that invite a friend invite a few friends costs only five dollars and all again all of that is going to the the food bank uh, and then men not to be left out but uh, not this coming Saturday but next Saturday there's going to be a men's fellowship men's breakfast event on the Saturday morning and I encourage you to talk to Pastor Shea about that so many things are happening and they're all here in your connection guide Pastor Shea has a great uh, course that they're running on apologetics for parents. Uh, I've taken so much time, so I won't read the quote, but you should read the emails that he sent out and get involved in that, talking to your kids about how to share their faith and really how to answer the questions or the uh, onslaught that they're out there facing in the world today. Uh, that's all for me, Park Church. Have a great uh, evening and a great week. We'll see you on Sunday for Selfie Sunday. Have a great night.